Seth, the artificial intelligence who was also another replacement body for M. Bison. Seth was the final character to be released with the Season 4 DLC. Their fighting style is commonly referred to as move duplication. By using the Tandon engine, Seth has the ability to replicate special attacks from other characters and use said attack against them. In Street Fighter V, Seth's gameplay mainly focuses on Tanden-based moves mixed in with brand new moves. Their entire V-system is great to explore, but also hard to master, allowing for this synthetic humanoid some originality. Seth has a great set of normals that help with offense, one of them being their standing light kick. This is one of Seth's main pressure tools and is great at locking the opponent down to then allow for a throw or search for a hit with crouching medium punch, one of their main combo starters. If the opponent doesn't respect the standing light kick, then it will most likely result in a counter hit, which Seth can score decent damage from. A weirdly powerful button Seth owns is his standing heavy kick. This is a two-hitting heavy attack that launches the opponent in the air, which is also special cancelable. This is one of Seth's anti-air options due to the area it covers and its juggle properties. When used in the right context, standing heavy kick is extremely powerful. An annoyingly powerful special Seth has is their Annihilate Sword. This is an aerial attack that changes Seth's trajectory, making it tricky to counter. The light version can be considered an aerial poking tool, because when well-spaced, it's quite difficult to counter due to how quick it is. The medium version works similarly to the light version, except it's slower, whilst the heavy version causes a knockdown on hit, meaning if Seth can somehow manage to get the opponent to anti-air, the anti-air can lose and allow Seth some offense. If the opponent expects the Annihilate Sword, then Seth can mix things up with regular jump attacks and begin to pressure the opponent with their normals, therefore creating a mind game with Seth's jumps. To provide extra options in the neutral, Seth can use one of two V-Skills. Their V-Skill 1, Tandon Engine, is an attack that vacuums the opponent in and absorbs an attack, turning it into Tandon Install. The Install art can be executed by pressing the V-Skill buttons again. Some stolen specials are more practical than others, but every install art gives Seth unique combos and makes certain normals more threatening than before. Seth also has the option of getting a small combo extension from the vacuum effect if they so choose. The other V skill Seth has is the Tandon Booster. Seth dashes towards the opponent in which they can input any grounded specials during the dash. This changes the special and gives them unique properties. Hecatonkery's Glide is great for closing the gap from full screen, whilst Mad Spiral and Spin Pendulum assist with combos and help counter projectiles. Tandon Booster amplifies Seth's screen carry. To illustrate the creativity behind the Tandon system, Seth can use their V-Trigger 2, Tandon Maneuver. This is a giant projectile which Seth can pilot in any direction, with a total of four movements. It can be used to extend combos, create insane mix-up scenarios, and even counter certain defensive options. This V-Trigger is a huge time investment, but the mix-up scenarios are limitless, which makes this a great comeback tool and is the preferred V-Trigger for Seth. Seth is another glass cannon type of character. With great offensive options and a stupendous V-Trigger, there's plenty of room for players to really explore the Tandon system. The problem is, a lot of these moves come with great risk, and if used incorrectly, can result in losing the entire round. If you're a lab monster though, looking for a technical, highly creative character to explore, then merge with Seth. Dan, the hubristic self-taught martial artist who runs his own dojo. Dan was the first DLC character for the last season of Street Fighter V. He used a fighting style known as Saikyo, the ultimate fighting style that he invented by mixing multiple techniques. Dan is notorious for being the joke character of Street Fighter due to his clumsiness and unorthodox moves. But in Street Fighter V, he's been reinvented in a way that still makes him visually hilarious, but highly aggressive. Dan is now somewhat less of a joke and actually kind of good? On the surface, Dan's normals aren't great. They're stubby, some take a while to recover, and just don't pose much of a threat. However, with the assistance of his V-Skill 2, Saikyo style Otokoboe, Dan's normals become problematic for anyone. This allows Dan to cancel his normals into the V-Skill to then cancel again into another attack, whether it be a normal or special. 
These are referred to as taunt cancels. The taunt cancels significantly improve Dan's pressure, making this exclusive to him. Normals like standing medium kick and standing heavy kick become much more threatening, and his pressure can feel endless. On hit, depending on which normals connect, Dan can taunt cancel into his EX Dan Retsuken to help take the opponent to the corner. The timing to the taunt cancels is pretty strict, so if Dan messes up the timing, then he'll taunt the opponent. This leaves him vulnerable, which is not good, and allows the opponent to get an enormous punish. Another move Dan can use to catch the opponent off guard is his special attack, EX Dan Ku Kyaku. This is a fast special attack that has similar range to a standing heavy kick, making it quite the threat. This move can be used as a combo ender depending on the situation, which allows Dan to keep up the momentum. But one of its main uses is to help with applying pressure. When spaced correctly, EX Dan Ku Kyaku gives Dan a huge advantage, setting up the strike throw game and leaving him close enough to start his taunt cancel pressure. If it's spaced incorrectly, then that's fine too, because this move is safe on block, which allows Dan to be quite ignorant with it and not have any repercussions. Both of Dan's V-Triggers can really help bolster his combo potential. His V-Trigger 1, Hao Gadoken, was his ultra from Street Fighter 4 turned V-Trigger. Dan throws out a gigantic projectile which serves as a combo extender. Hao Gadoken can also be charged, and when charged to the max, becomes a 10-hitting projectile that causes a wall bounce allowing Dan to juggle the opponent. If the opponent blocks the fully charged fireball, then it causes a guard break. Fun fact, Dan's V-Trigger 1 is the only one-bar V-Trigger in the entire game. V-Trigger 2, Tenchi Saikyo no Kata, works in a similar fashion to other V-Triggers in terms of enchantments. VT2 strengthens Dan's fireball and uppercut. Garoken becomes Haten Garoken and Koryuken turns into Gokoryuken. By having these upgrades, Dan gets to preserve his meter for critical art and make his corner pressure even more frightening. The V-Trigger activation time freeze also allows Dan another opportunity to abuse the taunt cancel pressure and slowly take the opponent to the corner. These V-Triggers aren't huge comeback factors, but they do give Dan a bit of spice. This version of Dan is the best iteration by far. By combining his goofy elements with his V-Skill 2, Dan is respected more as a character now than ever before. Despite having cool mechanics, he does have his problems though. His damage output isn't the greatest, and the defensive mechanics of the game can easily break his momentum. Even so, Dan arguably has some of the greatest pressure in Street Fighter V. If you like taunting people and lengthy combos, then pick Dan and show the power of Psycho style. Rose, the Italian fortune teller who's also Minat's teacher. Rose is another popular character from the Alpha series. She's the original user of Soul Power, the direct opposite to Psycho Power. Rose fights using her scarf as she can fill it with Soul Power to use it as a weapon. Rose has a great mixture of powerful ranged attacks and the ability to nullify projectiles in ways different to Minat. She also acquired new moves alongside her old ones, making her a great fit in Street Fighter V. Rose has a plethora of strong kick-based normals, one of those being her Soul Pilastro. This is Rose's longest-reaching heavy attack, and makes for a decent poke when used sparingly, but its greatest strength is how it can hop over several attacks in the game, making certain characters think twice about what attacks to use. Soul Pilastro's mileage isn't huge, but it's a great deterrent. A normal which is a threat up close is Rose's standing medium kick. This has very specific uses, similar to Soul Palastro, and can avoid some low attacks, but the difference is it keeps her stationary. But where standing medium kick shines is when Rose is within throw range and when attempting to bait a throw. With a successful bait comes a full combo. If not, then she's safe from punishment. One of the most entertaining things about Rose is her V skill set. Her V skill 1, Soul Fortune, has her draw one of four tarot cards. Two of them work to her benefit, whilst the other two debuff the opponent. The red card increases her damage output for a short period of time, whilst the white card fills her V-gauge and replenishes her health. The green card nerfs the opponent's damage for a short period of time, whilst the purple card makes damage Rose inflicts on block more damaging. The tarot cards are quite technical and require some time investment. Soul Satellite returns as Rose's V-Skill 2. 
Rose can summon up to two orbs for a limited period of time. Within that time, Rose gains new combo possibilities and new ways to inflict pressure. If Rose gets hit whilst the orbs are out, then Soul Satellite will disappear. A new move that Rose acquired in Street Fighter V is Soul Punish, where Rose summons a stationary orb that appears in three different places depending on button strength. Soul Punish detonates automatically after a certain period of time, which allows Rose to convert into a number of situations. Against projectiles, Soul Punish can absorb them to then explode, making characters with projectiles scared to use them. When set up correctly, Soul Punish safely allows Rose to use either of her V-Skills, ultimately granting her amazing screen control. When it comes to combos, Soul Punish significantly increases Rose's damage, especially for post-stun combos. She can get really creative here, but if Rose gets hit while Soul Punish is out, then the orbs will just disappear. Rose's V-Triggers take her soul power to new lengths. V-Trigger 1, Soul Dimension, gives her access to a teleport which can send her to different locations on screen. Soul Dimension makes Rose's Soul Spark more threatening as she can immediately cancel into a teleport from it, ultimately making certain knockdown situations much more frightening. With V-Trigger 2, Soul Illusion, Rose summons a shadow of herself which imitates her attacks. Soul Illusion drastically improves Rose's combo potential by basically giving her custom combos, some of which can do an insane amount of damage. The V-Trigger drains rapidly, but if Rose lands a throw, then the gauge freezes momentarily. Both V-Triggers have a lot of depth to them. Rose is a great character in Street Fighter V. She has strong buttons, alongside cool combos, and decent screen control. Her problems lie against characters who can easily nullify her projectiles or consistently punish her long normals. Luckily, her V-Triggers allow her to stay in the fight. If you like stylish, JoJo-esque characters with cool custom combos, then your fortune lies with Rose. Thank you for watching. These character overviews are made possible by our generous patrons. For $1 a month, you can help support projects like this and also get bonuses like early access to videos and your name listed here. Up next is Oro, Akira, and Luke.